Welcome to This is Douglas County. I'm your host, Rick Martin. We kick off our brand new show with one of our very own DCTV 23 station manager, TJ Jaglinski. He's been a Douglas County employee for over 15 years now and has proven himself to be a dedicated and hardworking individual. Before becoming a husband, a father, a teacher, and a government employee, he was a student at Alexander High School. We go back to where it all started to sit down with the man behind the camera, T.J. Jaglinski. This is Douglas County. T.J., thanks for joining me today. I think this is a uh, unique opportunity for many of our citizens in Douglas County uh, because with this show, the purpose is really to showcase and profile you know, mm -hmm. the various departments of Douglas County and the people behind it, the key people behind it. Uh, TJ, since I joined the county uh, in my role, um, I've had the delight to experience how people react to you and how people value you in your role. Am I blushing? I think you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, I've, you know, at the risk of offending some people, I've seen so many people love on you because of your skills and your expertise. And even since when you became station manager of DC TV 23, that I'm so proud to have, you know, put you in that role, um, the feedback has been tremendous. You've been with the county for 15 years. Mm -hmm. What motivates, encourages, and inspires you as long as you um, have been a part of the county? What mm -hmm. keeps you going? Well, I think the, the underlying thing is the fact that I have a vested interest in the county. I've been here my entire life. Um, I was born and raised, we're right here at Alexander High School where I had the pleasure of attending ninth through uh, 12th grade, graduated from here. I also uh, had the honor of coming back and doing student coaching, student teaching, because I got my physical education degree. And then, although I wasn't teaching here, I was teaching at Dorset Shoals Elementary right down the road, I did get to come back and coach football and soccer. Wow. So, um, like I said, I've got a vested interest. Um, my children go to these schools in this county, and um, it, it's sort of in my best interest to make the county a better place. Whatever I can do, you know, that inspires me. You know, as we are sitting here and looking at the field, uh, where <laughs> you coached and helped uh, lead students, you know, to become young adults. And, um, you know, you didn't start your career in broadcasting. You started no. it in early education. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, I grew up playing sports. Um, I, guess, I guess I can tell you kind of how, why I went into it and then how I transitioned. And, and it all started really when I was about nine or 10 years old, my uncle was a photojournalist for Channel 5. And he took us on a tour of the station. And that's where it started. That's really where it wow. started. Wow. Uh, but I don't know, I, had, I was really good at sports. I love playing sports and I like teaching. I like kids. So I decided that I would pursue education. Uh, went and got my physical education degree. While I was teaching, I got my master's in early education. And after four years, I decided I like teaching, but I really want to go back to my first love, ah. which was video. I mean, I, I just loved it. So without uh, a job lined up, I quit teaching. I was young enough to kind of start over. Um, and I bought a computer, okay. bought a digital video camera, and just started making movies. Just started doing stuff on my own volunteered with a local guy named uh, Michael Winslet. Okay. 
and uh, just got my start there doing live productions, uh, commercials, just anything I could think of, anything I could do. It was free, a lot of it, but it was experience. And with that experience, I can only imagine how much experience when it comes to TV production, uh, editing, putting together stories and what have you. So tell me a little bit how you use those skills and how it applies to government, which you're a part of now. Right, we, we're, we're fortunate here in Douglas County to have a, a government access channel. And not only a government access channel, but one that really, really strives to inform the, the citizens, not only with just information, but entertaining information. I mean, this show, this show is a perfect yeah. example. I mean, right. we're, yeah. we're, we're doing a sit down interview, but it's sort of a different angle. We look for that different angle. Um, and, and, you know, knowing the basic skills of running a camera, knowing the basic skills of editing, it's not enough. You have to be a storyteller. And I think that's one of my strong points is I can go in and I can take footage that's been shot and tell a story with it. That makes it entertaining to the citizens. That makes it interesting. And they're more likely to watch. They're more likely to uh, hold on to that information. You know, and that takes me to the next question because, you know, some people may know, others don't. But this show itself is an opportunity to showcase the other show that mm -hmm. you host that began brand new, I think, last year. Right. So, Servings, mm -hmm. right, which helps uh, nonprofit organizations um, really get a chance to promote who they are mm -hmm. and give people an opportunity to to help uh, them, is that correct? It is. Uh, 13 years ago, we started a show called Gazoon Height to Your Health. And it was supposed to be a healthy cooking, healthy living, healthy playing show. Well, it evolved over those 13 years to finally be a show about the best of Douglas County because we ran out of things to cook, we ran out of <laughs> things to highlight, it just, it just got you know, to the point where we exhausted the show. Wow. So we took that particular show and evolved it again. Um, and I went to Wes Talon, who was in your position at the time, and I said, you know, what if we take Gazoon Height and we make it an interview show? Mm -hmm. You know, we still cook, mm -hmm. but we interview nonprofits because we have nonprofits come to us, organizations, they come to us and ask for public service announcements, they ask for advertisements, they ask for their own show. So what we decided was instead of just doing a sit down interview show, we wanted to do something where we could cook, have fun, cut up, talk about their organization, and then start all over again, you know, and cook some, some really good recipes. And it's worked out really, really well. Uh, some of the organizations that we feature, you know, if we sat down and just talked to them, yeah. it'd probably be about a five minute interview and it might not be something that the citizens of Douglas County would watch. This is something that we can use on our channel to, to show people. We can post it on our uh, Facebook page. Uh, we could tweet it, we can do whatever we wanted to with it, but they can also put it on their websites and their social media pages. So it's kind of a win-win for both. And you know, and that brings me, because I want to follow up with you, uh, with just, you know, DCTV 23 being a part of the Communications and Community Relations Department, where, you know, the mission, you know, really since I came on board, is not necessarily change, mm -hmm. but help what we have grow, mm -hmm. grow to become better as the county is growing itself. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit of how you have seen Douglas County grow from your beginning, your start, 15 years ago to where we are now. Wow, oh my gosh, we, well, we've outgrown the courthouse. That's, yeah, <laughs> so I'm hearing. Yeah, we, they moved into the courthouse in 1998. I didn't start until 2003, so they had a five-year head start on me. Uh, but yeah, we're busting at the seams as far as, uh, as, far as that goes. Um, yeah, we got a the Douglas County Annex building mm -hmm. about to open yep. up with GIS. Just got renamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, there's been uh, a lot of changes as far as that goes. And I think that the thing that impacts me the most with this change is the support that we're able to give the other departments. Whereas before we were almost this little thing on the side where we're making these TV shows and we're trying to go to people saying, hey, you know, let's get, let's get the word out about your department or let's, let's do this, let's do that. And now 
is sort of reversed where they're coming to us. And we're, we're real fortunate that we sort of inherited a drone um, and we get various departments come to us asking, you know, can you go fly over so-and-so parking lot so we can map out our event? Or, you know, can we fly over this new roof we got for the fire station? Can we do this? So I think the big change has been, uh, we've been seen more of an asset to the county and the county departments than ever before. Wow, uh, that's great to hear, that's great to hear. Tell me, uh, you've been, uh, you know, not only just, you know, viewed the history of Douglas County itself as it has grown, um, just in conversations. Um, tell me a little bit about the, the emergency uh, situations that you've had to respond as a communications department and DCTV 23 in, in, our, uh, in the history of the county. Yeah, I think the thing that st the the emergency that stands out the most was the flood of 2009. Um, we were a three-man department, um, and although I'm not directly involved with emergency operations, we assist. Uh, and we had a huge problem with, with it sounds funny with all the water that we got from the sky. Mm -hmm. We had a drinking water problem. Right. because they, they said don't don't use your tap water and in some cases it, they it was there wasn't as, didn't even exist they couldn't get any tap water so we set up uh, a couple water distribution points um, and so I was coordinating one of them uh, and another employee was coordinating the other spot but we would we would do that, we would go back to the courthouse, we would shoot these two minute updates with which roads are open, which roads are closed, where the water distribution points are, you know, all the information these people needed, and we would put it on social media, we put it on our television channel, uh, and I think we were doing that like every two hours for about a week. And that's the power of DCTV 23, mm -hmm. and uh, from what I understand, it was uh, a tremendous help and feedback you were receiving. Right, yeah. yeah. Dy dynamic, dynamic. Tell me something. I wanted to, uh, you've got to share the, one of the biggest questions I received since joining. TJ. Oh, Lord. Here what we go. What does TJ stand <laughs> for? Are you willing to share your real name? Toe Even Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Toe Jam. That's actually, you know, when I when I hear the word toe jam, I think of one of my friend, one of my best friends that I had here at Alexander. Mm -hmm. His name was Doug Hughes, and uh, yeah, he called me toe jam. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's all you're getting. Okay. <laughs> all right. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. What TJ stands for? Toe jam. But um, but yeah, but you know, Stanley is is, is your first name, Thanks. right? And, Appreciate uh, that. You know, it's it's a beautiful name. <laughs> beautiful. Received. If you live live in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> so look, there's a great read about um, you in a recent edition uh, of Chapel Hill News and Views. As a matter of fact, you and uh, the department's communication specialist, Lena Hardy. Uh, what was the feedback you received from that? I, just a lot of congratulations, really. Um, you know, I knew that Chapel Hill News and Views got a lot of viewership, but it gets a lot of viewership. <laughs> <laughs> I had people really? call in. I got cards and letters. It was, wow. you know, got a lot of feedback. Wow. You know, and I got to know because you're a really, really mild-mannered guy. But how did that make you feel? I mean, as honest as you're willing to be with me, how did that make you feel? Well, honestly, a little uncomfortable sometimes because, uh, you know, when I get complimented, I really don't know what to say or do. <laughs> so it was it was a little uncomfortable, but it definitely was uh, humbling and it was very much appreciated. Wow, wow. You know, and that's the feedback we received, you know, really from the public and those you work with. Tell me a little bit about personally, your family, your spouse. What was the reaction there? Well, uh, you know, anytime my wife and I celebrate any sort of wins in our life, we like to, to celebrate. So one of the things we did was we all went out as a family and had dinner. Um, my wife and I love to sit on the back porch and have a drink, you know, and, mm -hmm. and talk about, 
you know, where we've come from, where we are now. And it's, it's always, I think it's, it's always good to, when things like that happen, to recognize it for what it is and to go back and think about where you've come from. You know, some of the times when, when you're using the credit card to pay for groceries and, and that kind of stuff and, and then see how much you've been blessed over the past years. Wow. And you know, that brings us back to really where we are, you know, at Alexander High School, where it all began for you, TJ, mm -hmm. um, as you described. I mean, you know, tell me a little bit about what tips you can share for the next generation that may be viewing or watching this show that, you know, can't see the future, can't, don't understand how to overcome the obstacles mm -hmm. that may come their way and challenge them through, you know, the adversity of school and mm -hmm. education and getting that first job and, and the hope of the future. What tips are you willing to share? Well, I, I guess the best way to say it would be to short, sort of use the uh, philosophy I use for working out. There is easy to work out. It's easy to make progress in the gym. And the same thing can uh, bleed over into life. And it's the three C's. Confidence, uh, commitment, and consistency. Confidence that you're going to do it. No matter what, you're going to do it. Commitment is sort of the same thing, but it's that day-to-day, -day, you know, I have decided that this is what's gonna happen. This is a decision I've made. And then consistency for me is really the most important one because I think a lot of people, they, they make that commitment, that New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. but two months down the road, where are you at? <laughs> right. So that, that consistency is what pays off and that, that goes for anything. If, you're, if you've decided, you know, this is the career path I want or I want to be out of debt in, you know, 10 years or five years, two years, whatever it is, it takes that confidence that you're going to do it, the commitment to do the things that it takes to make it happen, mm -hmm. and then the consistency of continuing to do it day in and day out. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Some keys to the success of life consistency, confidence, and commitment. Not necessarily in that order. Hey, that was there's not an order. You just got to do all just three. Do all three. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us in this, uh, in, in our first inaugural show. Um, we thank you, uh, TJ, I have to thank you. Absolutely. Honestly, for this opportunity, you know, to share, you know, you, your role, and, um, you know, to help someone and help others in the pursuit of happiness. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Mm -hmm.